And I will be talking about the use of growth factors as a potential therapy in uh, Parkinson's disease. Some of you may have heard about uh, the growth factor called GDNF and uh, the fact that Amgen had a trial with this growth factor. And that was the subject of a 60 Minutes um, um, report about a year ago. So some of you may have heard about growth factors as a means of potentially treating Parkinson's disease. And that's the topic I'll be talking about today. Uh, there was some controversy in the fact that the company that began clinical trials with the growth factor in Parkinson's disease stopped it uh, when a number of patients believed that they might have been benefiting from it. And um, I've been working on growth factors in the laboratory and now in human clinical trials for a few years. And uh, we are bringing back growth factors for the potential treatment of Parkinson's disease in clinical trials that are now underway using a different technique than that that had been employed by the company previously. We are using techniques of gene therapy to deliver these growth factors to the brain. So that's what I'll talk to you about. I'll talk to you about growth factors, their potential to treat Parkinson's disease, and the use of gene therapy as a means of delivering these growth factors into the brains of people with Parkinson's disease. And um, this whole area of growth factors and gene therapy represents a whole new area in clinical medicine that we as neurologists, but, as, but physicians treating all kinds of diseases are trying to develop and use for novel, better, you know, unprecedented therapies potentially for the treatment of these disabling and, uh, and, um, and troubling diseases for which we don't have effective means for slowing the progression or stopping the disease. So it's that potential. And it's this movement toward what we call the era of molecular medicine that I'll be talking to you about. And uh, more specifically, we're going to talk about how we're going to deliver a growth factor. Now, you probably can't read from the back of the room the small type up here, so uh, I'll read it for you. We're going to talk about the delivery of a growth factor called nurturin, which is in the same family as the other growth factor called GDNF as a potential treatment for people with Parkinson's disease. And the research and the work and the clinical trial results that I'll be telling you about today are largely the work of a company in San Diego called Seragene, and, uh, and the leader of the scientific effort in that company named Ray Bartis, as well as academic collaborators um, at uh, Rush University in Chicago, Jeffrey Cordova, and then a neurologist at UCSF, uh, that's University of California, San Francisco, that led the clinical trials that I'll be talking to you about today. Um, and actually, I should mention as, a, as disclosure that I, am, I founded this company called Saragene, so I'm going to be talking to you about their data, but uh, you should take what I say um, with the knowledge that I'm a founder of the company. So if, if that uh, subconsciously biases me, then you should know that now. So, so as all of you are well aware, Parkinson's disease affects one half to one million people in the United States, and it's characterized by progressive slowness and a number of other symptoms that, that develop and progress over 10 to 15 years. And treatment with dopamine replacement drugs is effective in early stages of the disease. However, the effectiveness of these drugs wears off at about the mid-stage of the disease as on-off phenomena and uh, the difficulty finding an effective dose becomes more and more difficult. And, and so we need better therapies that help to slow the progression of the disease and enhance the effectiveness of the drugs like the dopamine drugs, the cinnamon type drugs that many of you take. And the disease is caused primarily by the loss of cells in a smaller, deep part of the brain here called the substantia nigra. This, the cells in this part of the brain send their connections to another part of the brain called the striatum. And again, I don't know how well you can see this diagram. But the idea is that most of the degeneration that causes symptoms in Parkinson's disease occur in well-described areas of the brain. And science has identified growth factors that can prevent the death of these cells that are largely responsible for many of the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And this is an illustration of what these growth factors can do. Let me point to this right side because I think it's clearest from those of, for those of you who might be in the back. These individual dark circles, these dots, these splotches, if you will, that you see on the screen are the individual cells that are vulnerable in Parkinson's disease. And on the left, we see the normal population of these cells in the monkey brain, one of the animal models we use to study growth factors. We can induce a Parkinson's-like state in monkeys and in rats and in mice by, by treating their brains with a toxin that causes the loss of these cells. So in the middle panel here, 
you see a degeneration and loss of most of the cells that would otherwise be present in this part of the brain. And when we treat these mice or rats or monkeys with the growth factors for the system, and then we give them the toxin that ordinarily kills these cells, we see a remarkable preservation of these cells. We see the prevention of death of almost all of these cells in the animal models in which we use to, to, to uh, model Parkinson's disease. So growth factors have the potential to prevent the death of cells that are vulnerable in Parkinson's disease and to stimulate the function of these cells. And that has been the basis of a number of clinical trials that have gone forward in Parkinson's disease over the last 10 years, trying to determine whether growth factors can be a useful therapy. All of those trials to date have come up against a significant obstacle. And that has been how do we get effective doses of these growth factors into the brain? And the reason that's an obstacle is because these growth factors, when administered as injections peripherally or as pills taken orally, do not reach the brain. So we have to administer them directly into the brain to hope to see their therapeutic benefits. And furthermore, we have learned in the clinical trials that have occurred that to administer them to the brain effectively and safely, we have to restrict their access just to the parts of the brain that are affected by Parkinson's disease. If in, the, if in the animal studies and in the human clinical trials, we administer these growth factors into the brain and allow them to spread beyond the targeted region, they cause intolerable side effects. So the challenge that the field of medicine has faced in trying to test the potential of growth factors to treat Parkinson's disease has been how do we get them into the brain in effective doses and how do we limit their delivery to specific areas of the brain that are degenerating in Parkinson's disease. To my knowledge, no other problem in medicine has faced this challenge of getting effective doses into a small region and limiting the delivery of that drug to that region. That has been the special challenge in trying to implement growth factor therapy for Parkinson's disease. And I'll tell you two potential ways of overcoming that problem, of addressing that problem. But first, to take a step back, let me tell you a little bit more about growth factors. These are proteins that are normally made in the nervous system throughout life. They are first made in animals and humans during fetal development of the nervous system, where their normal role during fetal development is to support the survival and help cells identify where they're supposed to connect in the nervous system. Throughout life, these growth factors continue to be made in our brains. Every one of us in this room is making growth factors in our brain. They're being moved back and forth in the brain, and they're being used to support the normal function of the brain. We discovered, I don't mean myself, but scientists discovered 20 years ago that in animal models of disease, if we deliver higher doses of the growth factor that are normally present in the brain, we can entirely prevent the death of cells in animal models of disease. And this initiated an era of great excitement about the potential of growth factors to treat progressive neurological disorders like Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease and ALS. So the, the idea of the program that I'm going to describe to you now is, is that we're testing the concept that if growth factors are delivered to the human brain in the context of disease, they may constitute the first effective therapies for slowing the progression of Parkinson's disease and improving function in the brain. This is another example of what these growth factors can do. Again, I think the, for those of you in the back of the room, you probably can't see. But again, in the monkey brain, we can model the death of cells by cutting their projections to another part of the brain.